Hello folks, this is Sula speaking. Welcome to another video for Teamfight Tactics. This is taken from a double up game. So with me is JDP El Grillo. And in this double up game, I am going to be playing through a Mirage team composition. Eventually, we're going to take a little bit to get there, but eventually be playing Mirage. And this is specifically the Warlords version of the Mirage trait. Now I've wanted to get some good footage of playing the Mirage trait and I haven't really gotten too much of that up until this video, uh, in part because it's just a team comp system that's a little tricky to play because Mirage has its seven different variations. Every time that you play a game, you have a chance of getting a different one of the Mirage variations. But more so than just that, I tried playing some Mirage comps at the start of the set, at the beginning of set seven, and honestly, it didn't go very well for me. I don't think that I was playing them correctly since the set was new, and I've kind of stayed away from them. I also think that because the Mirage team compositions do change from game to game, that they tend to be somewhat more inconsistent in terms of playing them. Like it's a little bit harder to just like force your way into a Mirage board simply because of the way that the trait constantly can change from game to game. But uh, in this game, we're going to end up heading in that direction uh, after a false start with another setup, as you're going to see. Uh, for this particular game, the, Warlord, the Mirage trait is Warlord's Honor. And that is a reference to all, all of the uh, various things that Mirage can be are references to traits that were from other sets. So Warlord's Honor is a reference to the Warlord's trait from set four. And just as that trait did back in set four, uh, it gives you additional health and additional ability power to Mirage units. And then it can stack up to five times each time you win a combat. Any units that are on the board get a stack, and then the benefit increases if you win more rounds. So it kind of favors sticking with the same units and sticking with the trait for some period of time because you get a significantly higher benefit if you manage to win a series of rounds with it. All right, here, so just, just to get tie this back to what I'm doing in this game right now. So Grillo is my partner here. Grillo is going to play a Jade setup on this game. He's actually had a fair amount of success in finding some Jade units. He also was able to pull a Jade Crest out of his initial augment, which is really good for Jade team compositions. Jade is nice to find because it gives you, uh, basically it makes it much easier to play nine Jade if you get that plus one Jade. Otherwise at level eight, you, you tend to end up with Shi OU, you tend to end up with, um, with eight Jade instead of nine Jade. But if you have that plus one, you can usually get up to nine Jade. And so it just makes it much easier to spike on Jade 9, which is a big jump up from Jade 6. As far as what I have, though, here, I am still trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to be playing in this game. So I don't want to play Jade because Grillo is going to be playing that. I have had some units that could point me in that direction. That's probably what I would try to play if this was a more normal game. But I don't want to play into the same thing that my partner is playing in this game. So I was looking around, it's like, I really don't have, like, a quirky start here, which would be kind of one of the other classic team compositions to go into. I have managed to make a Rage Blade, which is the kind of the best thing that I have going thus far. So I was like, all right, I've got a Rage Blade. I've got this glove left over. I was like, uh, okay, I think that maybe what I'll do is I'll look to go into playing uh, Varus here. I, I posted a video on YouTube uh, a day or two ago. I don't know exactly when I'm going to post this, but uh, a, a previous game that I did in single player trying to play Varus, who was very strong in previous versions of this uh, of this set, but not so strong right now. And so um, Grillo actually had a Varus in his shop. So I was like, you know what? Let's just use that early cheap send. If you can send me the Varus, I'll put this Rage Blade on him, and then I'll look to play into the Varus here. And I'm going to try to play, and I was like, all right, I'm going to try to play Reroll Varus. I know it's going to be uncontested. We should be able to three-star that, and then I'll be able to go from there. But other problems I have right now is I'm kind of missing the pieces for it. I haven't seen any Varuses. Like, I got one from Grillo, but we did have to use our early cheap send in order to do that. It is worthwhile if we're going to play into this unit uh, long term, but uh, we, you know, we did have to use a resource to get that. The other thing I'm missing, though, is if you want to play this, you really want to get Astral Trait in immediately. And in fact, I'd say that that's kind of a precondition for playing this setup since Reroll Varus is not especially strong right now. You need to get Astral in right away so that you can start getting the Astral Shops. And ideally, you would have Varus plus Skarner plus Alawi because you typically want to play Bruiser Frontline with this setup. So have those three units in, ideally with an early Varus. Grab Skarner, Alawi, there's your Frontline. Now you've got three Astral in, or alternately an early Nami. You can play early Nami as well, just as kind of a decent utility unit. But you need to get that three 
<laughs> need to get that three Astral in because that is a team comp that relies on three-starring all the Astral units that you're playing. If you can't do that, the units are going to be very, very weak. There's also no obvious Dragon to play into at that team composition. I guess Siphon is probably the best one because you typically play through bruisers and you can kind of fit Siphon in as, in as a bruiser. I know I had some Varus games from earlier in the set, but this unit is just not that strong anymore. And I know I said that in the last video, so I hate to repeat myself, but just not that strong. Like right now I have a one-star version of the unit and like you can see it's just not really doing a lot of damage. It takes absolutely forever to kill this Leona. Now I'm going to win this round because this person also has no damage on their board, but uh, you can't rely on that for too long. So, so far so good, but I don't have Astral Trait in play. I'm playing Guardian Frontline, which does not synergize with what I have at all. And uh, <laughs> I am not exactly seeing a lot of viruses thus far. So I was like, oh man, you know, I would not mind pivoting out of this if I can find a way to pivot into something else because I don't love the setup that I have here thus far. Uh, I'm actually going to be last pick because I've won every single round thus far. And I was like, well, out of these options here, I guess I'll just take a frontline item. This is not bad because I took cybernetics, one of the cybernetics for my initial augments. There you go. Grillo's board is already looking a little bit stronger than mine. Um, but I was able to get, uh, I took cybernetics for my uh, augment. So I can put this on a frontliner and that's going to be pretty good. Here in double up mode, this is going to be the initial uh, gold drop or the initial option to take either an item or gold. And I usually take the gold, uh, like, I don't know, probably about 80% of the time when we play this mode. I have been enjoying this mode. Most of the games I've been playing of uh, uh, Teamfight Tactics have been this game mode, the, uh, the double up mode, just because it's a bit more fun. Anyway, though, but you do see we're looking at these other boards. So some people playing Jade. A lot of people are playing Corky. So that's why I was hesitant to try to pivot into Corky. I was like, oh, a lot of people seem to be playing into Corky right now. So I don't think that's the way to go. But I do have this Rage Blade. That's really the best thing I've made thus far is I've got this Rage Blade. So you want? I'm trying to think about, like, what can I play that can use this Rage Blade? And if it's not going to be, like, a Swift Shot board with Varus or Zaya, who would be, of course, the other Swift Shot unit to play, really, realistically, the only other option would be to play into uh, into Deja, who also who is the Wind Dragon, who has is the Mirage Dragon, and makes very good use of Rage Blade as well. I suppose I could play into Swain. That is also an option. Swain also makes decent use of the Rage Blade, but Swain is also another unit that's not especially strong right now. Anyway, this is the round I was about to win, but then their partner comes in and uh, <laughs> their entire team shows up. And that is not the sign that I was looking for. So going to end up losing that one. Here I have the option to send Grillo an item, tier, cloak, or gold. And Grillo is going to take the gold. I will happily, though, pick up this Anivia. Because he's playing through Anivia, we would like to try to three-star Anivia, and that will be really useful to use my cheap send, the one that can only be used on one, two, or three cost units, on sending him Anivias, whether that's a one-star Anivia to make a two-star Anivia for him, or a two-star Anivia to, in the hopes of three-starring it. So I'm probably just going to hold Anivias in the hopes of three-starring Anivia. And then my other more expensive sends can be used on uh, ideally finding like a Shio Yu, for his Jade composition, or maybe a Nico, maybe like two-star Nico, but we'll have to see what we can find. All right, so we thought we were doing pretty well thus far. The problem is there was this other team that was on full win streak, both on 100 HP, and I'm going to be up against one of those two players. And yeah, I, I mean, I might be able to beat this board, maybe, but I don't exactly have that much in play. And in fact, it's going to take way too long to get through this Silas. Like, it's taken me so long to kill Silas that I was like, yeah, I just don't do enough damage to get through this person's front line right now. So it does not look as though I'm going to be able to interrupt their win streak. I mean, I can kill Namzi. This is an unstacked Namzi, but that's not going to be enough to overcome Trist and Lulu and Jinx. And their board is looking pretty good. Oh, can Grillo come in here in time? And yes, actually, he is going to come in. So I'm not going to be able to win this. Can Grillo win this with his Ash? It's like, no, actually, no. But at least he was able to kill one more unit. So that means we'll take one point less damage than we would have otherwise. But And it does look like one of their other players lost that round. So we were definitely concerned about this team that was win streaking. You never like seeing two people that are on full win streak. Uh, one of their win streaks was someone was able to end. I think Grillo was the one who actually ended their win streak. But I was I, I am in a much weaker position, and I don't really like my board at all. So if I wanted to play in the Varus, again, as I was saying, I'd want to have I'd want to have Astral in here. I'd want to have a Bruiser front line. Varus plays naturally into a Bruiser front line. I'd want to be getting the Astral shops, but I still do not have Astral trait in. 
And I still have this guardian front line, which is like, oof, that's not really what I want. And now I'm going to get a rod, which is also not exactly what I want. I've already made the rage blade. I can't really use rods in this team composition. Again, there was an option there to maybe pivot into Swain, but I don't think that Swain team compositions are very strong right now either. So I'm going to sell to try to get up to uh, to try to get up to 50 gold. And now I'm trying to figure out what to do with these items. I was like, uh, I've got a sword, a rod, and a glove. I was like, well, Varus probably wants Infinity Edge out of these items. None of this stuff's going to be that good on a frontliner. So I would be happy to pair something with the uh, belt that's on Leona. Because I'm actually not getting great cybernetics value right now. All my items are just on two units, which is not ideal for cybernetics. By the way, and now we're looking at these other teams. And somehow these teams that are win streaking have both natural GOU at 2% odds. So I was like, oh my God, not only are these guys full win streak, they also got Shio Yu at 2% odds and they both hit. It's like not even one of them hit. They both hit Shio Yu at 2% odds. Now one of them's playing Jade. The other one's playing Corky, but you know what? Or playing into Corky. They're playing Trist and uh, Jinx right now. But it's like, you know what? Remember, Corky can play through like any dragon whatsoever. So can you put a Shio Yu just on the board in a Corky team cop? It's like, well, yeah, you absolutely can do so. And then they'll just transfer that over to their partner down the road so we were like all right these people are high rolling out of their minds with a quirky with two shio U's on each of their boards so we we're like well i guess we're probably just playing for second place in this game i still don't have a clue what my board's gonna be so i was like i think i need to roll here to stabilize i was like can i get astral trade in and roll but i actually can't even get astral trade in to roll i should have held that vlad that was in the store earlier i was like oh man i I'm really at a loss here. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to roll here and praying I can hit something. I was like, ah, Twitch. And then, oh, the lifeline, my savior. There's a Deja in the shop at 5% odds. I was like, oh, thank God. Thank God that there's a Deja in this shop. So now it is full pivot time. We are pivoting as hard as we possibly can and looking to go into Deja. And now, now finally, I know what I'm going to do with this game. I'm going to play into Mirage. And I'm going to play into Deja for this one. So thank goodness that popped up into my store at the 5% odds. I, that is super lucky to have that happen because I had absolutely no direction in my team. And I was just at an absolute loss about what I was going to do. All right. So I already had Leona on my board. So this gets me up to Mirage 4. And this is the, as I said at the top of the video, this is the Warlord's Honor version of the Mirage trait. Usually just referred to as Warlord's which grants the Mirage units additional health and additional ability power. Now, I don't know all the Mirage numbers off the top of my head because I don't play this that much. So I've got the cheat sheet open on my other screen here. Warlord 4, which is what I have in right now, or uh, excuse me, Mirage 4, <laughs> for having Deja in, is uh, it's 350 health and 35 ability power. If I can get up to Warlord 6, that'll be 500 health and 50 ability power. And that applies only to the Mirage units, which right now is just Deja and is Leona. I, of course, get three ranks of Mirage for having Deja in, and then I get uh, one rank of Mirage from Leona. So now I am looking to find some of the other units that will go into this comp. I definitely need to find Nunu, and then also find Yone, but Nunu is more important. I also need to start transitioning slowly from a Guardian frontline over to a Cavalier frontline, because that's Nunu is going to be the primary frontliner, the primary tank, and Nunu means I need other Cavaliers. There actually is a Lilia in the shop right now that I should pick up. Let's see if I remember to do this. So I'm now going to have the somewhat tricky task of trying to transition my board from something that was being built not at all for Mirage units into a setup that does have Mirage units. I also have this Infinity Edge on my bench. So I was like, ah, oh, I've got this Infinity Edge. What am I going to do with this IE? And then I was like, wait a minute. I've got a rod on Deja right now. If I can get one more glove, I can make Jeweled Gauntlet plus Infinity Edge for the Spell Crit combo. And because I lost some rounds there, I actually get the second pick here, which is a little bit surprising. But I guess it's because we're not at the top of the uh, standings. I was like, oh, Give me that Sona with the glove. Yes. So now I'm going to have really, really good items for Deja. I'm going to have the Rage Blade, which is really important because you need to stack up a attack speed on Deja. You can skip Rage Blade if it's like the Duelist version of Mirage, which gives you natural stacking attack speed. But for Warlords, which does not give you any attack speed, you need something that's going to give you additional uh, attack speed. And so I'm going to get that from the Rage Blade. Then I'm going to have the Jeweled Gauntlet. So all the spells can, all, all magic damage, all spells has the chance to crit. And then Infinity Edge will make sure that they always crit. 
will basically mean that I have guaranteed crits and also does a little bit to increase the damage that I get from those crits. So now I'm continuing to look to build into this. My plan was I'm going to go to seven. I'm going to roll on seven, see if I can find Nunu, see if I can find Sejuani. Maybe I'll be able to find Hecarim and transfer over into a Cavalier front line, or at least, again, start transitioning into a Cavalier front line. I still got the Ezreal on my board right now, and that's because for the time being, I can't really put anything better than that. Like, there's no point in putting in the Lilia until I have Nunu. And there's no point in putting in Shen, who I probably should just get rid of off of my bench. So yeah, not really much point in that. Oh, hello. Did you see that <laughs> that uh, wave of wind energy that Deja fired out? Yep, her projectile just hits super duper duper hard right now when uh, it, because I've got the Infinity Edge plus Jeweled Gauntlet combination. And this is really uh, just about ideal for this particular uh, Mirage variant that we have here, which again is Warlords. So again, a little bit about kind of the theory behind why you would want this setup. So uh, Infinity Edge Jeweled Gauntlet, of course, causes your spells to crit and have guaranteed odd to crit. So when do you want this? Like why? Like when is it good to have this? When is it not so good to have this? Basically, if you have very high AP or you're getting, it, basically if you can get AP from another source, like not from your items, that's when it's best to get this. Because of course, Infinity Edge Jewel Gauntlet ties up two of your three item slots. So you want to run this when you're getting ability power from other sources. So the classic example would be if you get it from a trait that provides ability power. Uh, for example, the Arcanist trait back in the last set innately provided ability power. So most of the Arcanists, if you're trying to play through an Arcanist like Lux in set six or Victor in both halves of the set, it was really good to have this spell crit combo because, you know, if you had Arcanist six in, you got like 80 ability power or something like that. I don't remember the exact numbers, but like you'd get this huge amount of, oh geez, look at these spell crits. I don't think it's enough to win this round, but yeah, Deja's hitting like a truck. But uh, <laughs> if you're getting ability power from your trait, then it's really good to amplify that by putting spell crit, uh, by putting spell crit stuff on there. Now, conversely, it's actually not great to get this if your trait does not provide ability power. So in this set, mages, mage, the mage trait causes units to double cast, but it doesn't give them ability power innately. So for that reason, it's generally not that good to put spell crit on mages in this set. I mean, it's not terrible. Like if you put like jeweled gauntlet, infinity edge on, I don't know, like like uh, a rise or something. Like it's not awful, but it, it's generally not good because you're using up items for spell crit and you're just like your base AP is just not that high. All right, anyway, in terms of what's going on in this game right now, I'm going to send Grillo the Shi OU that popped up in my store. So now he will be able to get Shi OU on his board and get up to at least six Jade. I don't know if he can get up to the nine Jade immediately, but uh, that's looking pretty good there. I am also been able to find a Nunu. So now I'm rolling to try to hit Nunu two star and I'm going to grab that. And then I'll hit another Deja. That is really nice. And I was rolling here. There's another Anivia. And then I hit two star Nunu. And that's what I was really looking for there. So I'm going to take some of these tank items. I'm going to put a Sunfire on, um, on my Leona. That'll probably get transferred to someone else down the road. And then I'm also going to put the, uh, this, uh, random cloak on Braum because Braum will get cybernetics value from that. Not a lot, but he will get a, a tiny bit of extra health from having cybernetics value. And then the Thief's Glove on Nunu. Now, I would really like to itemize Nunu in this board. And in fact, when you play this variation of Mirage, Nunu is an extremely important unit to itemize because he, basically both of the stats he gets from the uh, Warlord version of Mirage are really good on him. He gets the extra health, which he needs as a frontliner. Uh, he gets extra armor and magic resistance from the Cavalier trait, which he needs as a frontliner. So he needs additional health, and he gets that via this version of the Mirage trait. I'll come back to this in a second, but uh, these augments, I don't love any of these. I was like, do I take Dragon Alliance and try to fish for another Deja? But I was like, nah, I'm not going to play more dragons. I already have a Sunfire Cape, so I don't need Sunfire Board. Warrior Crest, no. So I was like, all right, well, this is the last augment. Let's reroll it. And I was like, oh, hallucinate. Mirage Champions take 90% less damage for the first six seconds. It's also going to make Yone two star. So this is not amazing for me. Like, I don't love this augment, but I think it's the best out of the various options that I had. So I'm going to drop the Shen to get Cavalier trait in with that Lilia. I would actually rather play Sejuani and I actually went by a Sejuani in my shop there. And then I rolled like a little bit more gold. I think I was looking for a Sejuani, even though I missed one in my store. But uh, then just Deja two star pops up and I was like, okay, well, I definitely should stop rolling now. 
I've already hit Deja two star. That's going to be pretty crazy. So that was about as easy as I could possibly have getting the <laughs> getting the Deja two star in. And of course, that's going to increase all the damage that uh, Deja does. So let's just watch here for a second and see how much damage she does when she fires off the big wind projectile. Now her auto attacks do a lot of damage too. Like don't don't tr ignore how much damage the auto attacks do. But oh my goodness, woo! <laughs> Deja two star, yeah, that just did like eleven hundred damage to everybody that got hit by the big wind blast, and uh, the entire backline of that team just collapsed instantly. I think the quirky on that board actually got one shot instantly. So, I'm gonna be sitting pretty right now. To go back to the point I had a minute ago, though, was I was talking about Nunu, and I, and I was trying to talk about why this Warlord variation of Mirage is really good for him. So, as I said, he gets armor and magic resistance from the Cavalier trait, which he needs as a frontliner. So the other thing he needs is health as a frontliner, and he gets that via this trait. I now have Mirage 6 in, so that means I get 500. Is it 500 health? I believe it's 500. I'm going to look at the cheat sheet again. It is, yeah, 500 health and 50 ability power. But wait, it actually doesn't stop there. This is like the, the buy stuff online video. It's like, but wait, there's more. Um, <laughs> so remember, the way that this trait works is also every time you win a combat, you get a stack of war, of the Warlord thing. Uh, and each one is worth 10%. And it stacks up to five times. That's when you win the combat. So for being in five winning combats, you can stack that up to 50% higher. So if... Now, Nunu has not been around to get the full stacks yet. But once he's around for all of those stacks... He will uh, eventually be getting 750 health and 75 ability power. Uh, so that's quite a bit, right? The se 750 health is like almost a Warmogs. Warmogs is 1,000 health. And 75 ability power, that's, you know, that's basically a free death cap because death cap is 70 ability power in this version of the game. So they're basically getting like three quarters of a Warmogs and a free death cap. This is also important for Nunu because remember the way Nunu's ability works is when he chomps people, if his health is higher than his target's health, he deals true damage which is really good because he's usually biting tanks on the other team. And if you can turn that into true damage, you can get through that and, uh, you know, ignore all the armor and magic resistance. All right. Well, anyway, we just had a carousel there. I was third pick on the carousel. There was a Yasuo on the carousel that nobody picked up. And I was like, well, I'm going to take that. If nobody wants the Yasuo, I'm sure, sure as heck going to grab that Yasuo and just play it. And in fact, nobody grabs it, which was a huge mistake. They definitely should not have allowed that to happen. So I'm going to move out of the, again, continuing to move out of this Guardian frontline. And now we're moving into uh, Cavalier frontline, which is what you want to play long term when you're running a Mirage board. So I'm going to be, I'm going to sell the Braum. I'm going to sell the Leona. It's sad to do this, but I want to transfer that Sun Fire Cape over. Would be really nice putting that on uh, Hecker or putting that on Nunu, but I've already put the Thief's Glove on Nunu. As I said, I would have loved to itemize Tank Nunu here. Give him like, I don't know, a Gunblade and like a Wormogs for more health and like a Jeweled Gauntlet. Although he actually has ruled Jeweled Gauntlet in this round anyway on his Thief's Glove. Yeah, look at that. He just one-shots uh, the frontliner there, just tosses him right into his stomach. Um, so yeah, I would have loved to have itemized him. But just there's only so many items. You can't itemize everything. I focused on itemizing Deja. And now because I've been able to get this Yasuo off Carousel, which was a major mistake for the rest of the field, they should not have let me get that unit. Uh, I'm going to focus on itemizing Yasuo, and then Yasuo will take over as the other secondary carry. So it's going to be Deja and Yasuo as my main carries, and then Nunu is like alternate third carry if he rolls good stuff on his Thief's Glove. I do have the Cavalier stuff in right now, though, so I'm feeling better about that. Now I'm going to try to go to level 8 and then look to play... Uh, look to play something on level 8. I have no idea what that unit's going to be. I would love to just toss in like a random bard or something. Meanwhile, Grillo, for his part, is also running... He's kind of got an unusual bar board there because he's got the Jade Zaya in there, and he's also got a Hecarim on his board. I think he's trying to build this. I'm not exactly sure where he's going with this board. <laughs> Grillo is very good at playing creative boards that you don't uh, that are like not necessarily meta compositions, and he always seems to be able to make them work out. So I definitely still need to roll a little bit more to get stronger. I need to upgrade my front line. I have the one-star Hecarim. I have the one-star Lilia. This is really not strong enough. I uh, actually would not mind playing Sejuani for another unit. In fact, Sej would not be a terrible unit to put in. And I wish I had like held on to a Sejuani from the early game. Like a two-star Sej would be nice. Oh my god, that damage from the Deja Wind Blast <laughs> just annihilates the entire back line. So yeah, Deja has 75 AP from stacking up the Warlord Mirage trait. And then gets the automatic guaranteed crit from Infinity Edge Dual Gauntlet. So those those uh, wind blasts just hit so hard, really really crazy. 
All right, so what am I looking to get here on the Treasure Dragon? Well, I'm really looking for items on Yasuo. That's what I want to get here. Uh, I'm trying to itemize him. I'm trying to get some stuff that's useful on him. I was like trying to think through this. I was like, do I want Quicksilver Sash? I'm like, no. The Gunblade would be awesome if Nunu could use it. No, but then, oh, this looks perfect. Look at this. So I'm going to be able to make two exceptionally good items on, on uh, Yasuo. I'm going to make the Hand of Justice, which is really good. I'm going to make the Titans. And then I still got another item slot open to make something. And then I have the pieces for a chalice, which is going to give even more ability power to Deja. And then, uh, <laughs> and then after that, we'll also give a little bit of additional ability power to Yasuo as well. So feeling pretty good about this. Now I'm like, wait, what do I put in at level eight? I was like, uh, not exactly sure what I put in here. I don't really have another unit. Um, again, Sejuani would be a nice unit to put in here. So I think at this point I was like, you know what? I think, you know, I made another two-star Nunu. I think just playing another Nunu is my best option. Even if this Nunu is unitemized, I think just another two-star Nunu is probably the best that I can do here. Um, because I'm going to hold that Nunu anyway. I might as well play the unit while I'm trying to three-star it. Now, Grillo has been picking up some Nunus as well. I believe he's getting close. I think he has two out of three Nunus on his bench that he's holding for me. So we're getting close to the potential to make Nunu three-star by like combining our units together. I'm also going to get Zephyr here. You might say, oh, that's sloppy positioning. Why didn't you dodge the Zephyr? Well, I don't dodge the Zephyr because one of the other team compositions has that Assassin Olaf and like a Diana on there. So I'm trying to position to dodge that team composition by cornering Deja. But then by cornering Deja, I get put in a position where I can get hit by stuff like that. It's just like I'm up against multiple team comps that can potentially cause problems. And yeah, not able to dodge everything. So that's what's going on there. Looks like I might have lost that round, although Deja was still alive, but one unit left alive on the enemy board. Yasuo gets off the third cast, and that's going to uh, <laughs> that's going to win that combat round. So anyway, we're feeling pretty good about our situation right here. I'll note that there's also a Yasuo on Grillo's board as well. So I have one Yasuo, he has one Yasuo. If uh, either one of us can find another one, then we can combine together. Actually, no, if, he, if I find another one, he can send to me. And then we'd be able to combine together. But, oh, see that popping up on the interface? Uh-oh. One of these players just made three-star siphon. So I was like, oh, ooh, three-star siphon. That is, uh, that's an oucher. We do not want to deal with that. So that is an eight-cost dragon that they just three-starred. And that team was just high-rolling really throughout the game. Like, they got the Shi OU super-duper early. And then somehow they got the... I'm not exactly sure how they hit three-star siphon so easily, but they did manage to hit it. Meanwhile, in this fight, Deja gets jumped on, which is uh, a little bit sad. So now it's going to be up to Nunu and Yasuo to try to carry this one. And in fact, they're actually going to carry it pretty easily. We get yet another Yasuo animation there. Uh, the rule is if Yasuo uses his third cast and there's only one enemy left on the board, then you, he auto-kills them and you get that animation. All right, so we're now up to seven Nunus. So I believe this is the point where, yeah, Grillo has two Nunus. I have one. I was like... Uh, can I send you this Nunu and then you send it back to me as a two star and then that'll make th a three star version of the unit. And Galo was like, okay, we can do that. He has two sends to me, so there's no reason not to do this. And then I have a cheap send for him. So we can go ahead and do this while still saving the more expensive ones. So it's like, all right, uh, do we want to do this? We're trying to talk this over right now. And we do end up sending this, but I think it might be after this round is over. Yeah, I guess we didn't get it off in time. We will end up doing that after this round. Now, I am the one up against the three-star uh, Siphon, but there is something that's very odd about this Siphon. If you look, this Siphon does not have any items on it. And I was like, wait, what? Why is this Siphon not itemized? Like, why have you not put any... Surely it's worth selling some of your other units to itemize this. So, like, that Siphon's going to dash over and one-shot my uh, Deja. So, I'm not going to win this round. And this is definitely going to be a very difficult unit for us to play through, but we do still have options here in double up mode. Just because someone makes a, th a uh, three star eight cost dragon does not automatically mean that you lose the round or that you lose the game. Excuse me. It does mean that I lost that round. So there are options here. One is if we can deal damage to their partner, we can potentially win the game just by knocking their partner out of the game. Uh, there is also the opportunity just to deal with the fact that they don't have that unit itemized. Anyway, on this carousel, there's two super valuable things here. There is a Yasuo here, so I could take the Yasuo, and then we could make Yasuo two-star. But in fact, there's something even better, and that's a Cavalier emblem. This is absolutely amazing for me, because this is going to allow me to get four Cavalier in play, and, and I have an open slot on my Yasuo. So I'm going to be able to make Cavalier Yasuo, which is literally like the absolute best item you can make on Yasuo. It really gives him everything that you would ever want. Is It means that he's going to get all the extra armor and magic resistances, on uh, for being a cavalier it also means he's going to boost the tankiness of all your other cavaliers by the way there is our 
our three star Nunu. And by the way, I'm rolling here just to figure out what other unit I can play here. I'm actually kind of looking for Sichuani. I wouldn't mind playing Sedge for five Cavaliers, which is very strong. But then I was like, so I was like, wait, no, there's just two pikes in my star. I was like, all right, we'll just play the two pikes then for randomly. Just play this pike and maybe I can hit pike two star. It doesn't fit my comp, but random legendary unit, sure, why not? Um, I will also want to point out one other thing in this fight. Nunu has rolled a death cap and a chalice in this board. So he has like insane ability power. It's like, look, he's just going to chomp his way right through the Orn that was frontlining for this other team. And then he's going to eat Namzi, And he is like, will not be denied in terms of what he's eating right now in this fight. He's just like walking around eating the entire team. So yeah, when Nunu actually rolls strong items on his, uh, on his Thief's Glove. Yeah. Nunu does the most damage in that fight. He does 10,000 damage, almost all of it true damage. When he actually rolls good items on his uh, Thief's, Thief's Glove, he's actually really, really strong and gives me another option. And then, oh, look at this. It's another high roll. There's a Yasuo in my shop. I was like, Grillo, can you send me the Yasuo on your bench? He goes ahead and does it. And there we go. Now we've got two-star Yasuo with incredibly good Yasuo items. I don't know if these are like the absolute most perfect items, but they're really, really close. I've got the Cavalier Emblem on him. So he's got tons of armor and MR. And he also is going to get that reset every time he kills something. I have a Deja who has fantastic items. And then I've got a three-star Nunu with the Thief's Glove. So I have like these three threats that are very, very strong. Now, once again, I have positioned directly into the Zephyr, which is pretty hilarious. I've positioned directly into that Zephyr again. But again, I was positioning for the Olaf board, which was another one that I could potentially hit there. I was trying to dodge the fact that I could get jumped on. And in fact, my board still seems to be winning without too much difficulty there. Did you see the Nunu just ate the Shi OU on the other, or ate something? Maybe it wasn't the Shi OU, but yeah. I'm still able to win. Yasuo is on max HP. Like, he is not even damaged. And we're able to win that round. By the way, the person with the uh, three-star siphon lost their round as well. So I don't know what they're doing, but for whatever reason, they're not itemizing that unit correctly. And we did have a feeling that this team had kind of misplayed, uh, had kind of misplayed from the position they were in, considering how they hit the Shio Yus on, you know, 2-1, multiple Shio Yus at 2% odds. And they hit Siphon 3-star, and like they're struggling in this lobby. We thought that they had kind of misplayed from their position. Anyway, don't get a chance to talk about Yasuo that much. Uh, definitely has been one of the featured units in the set. Yasuo is one of those units that people just throw into any team composition, even if he doesn't fit the team comp because he's just such a strong unit. Likes to dash around. Every third attack uh, is the area of effect dash that knocks people up. Really good with a blue buff. Uh, I don't have a blue buff on him, so he doesn't cast quite as frequently, but it's still a really good unit. I, by the way, I guess we could have tried to go for Deja 3-star. It was uncontested in this lobby, but um, ended up not doing that. And then now I finally made the Anivia 2-star, so I can look to try to send that to Grillo. I've also made the Pike 2-star, so I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll just stop rolling here and now go to 9 and look to play something else. But yeah, as far as items that Yasuo wants, again, so stuff that's like tanky plus AD is really good on him. So the Titans is very good on him. It gives him extra armor, magic resistance again, also gives him additional damage, stacks up very quickly throughout the fight. Hand of Justice is a fabulous item on him too. Now, normally you'd say probably Bloodthirster over Hand of Justice, but remember, he's getting 75 AP from the Warlord trait. So I actually think the Hand of Justice is probably better than Bloodthirster here because it just synergizes so well with all that AP he's getting by the way there's the siphon three star and yep he's gonna get yasuoed so i don't know if we win that fight normally but we win that fight because we've got we've got the yasuo and yasuo just auto kills him anyway so i was asking grillo do you need me to pick up nikos but i think i want to send him the anivia uh, I believe that we have eight Anivias between us, so we're getting really close to three-starring his Anivia. Oh, by the way, here's where I'm just going to get handed an item. I'm going to put the Warmogs on Lilia, make her tanky, also get her cybernetics value as well. So now every single unit on my team has cybernetics value. I'm going to send that over to him, and I can't remember if he hits the Anivia three-star. I know he's very close. Also, I should not be rolling here. I should be looking to go to nine. There's literally nothing for me to roll for. The entire board is two-starred. So there's really no purpose in rolling any further here. I should just be looking to econ up to level 9. Anyway, though, my board is pretty capped right now. Considering this is not level 9, this is a pretty insane board. Uh, if I, The only real way to make it stronger would be to find like a Mirage Emblem and then put in Leona. 
for eight Mirage, which would give me even more ability power and uh, even more health. So, hey, look at this. I actually managed to dodge the Zephyr for a change. I finally, finally did not get hit by the Zephyr. It goes on Pike, who is, you know, certainly not a bad unit. He's a five cost uh, legendary unit that I two starred, but certainly not one of the key units in this team composition. Anyway, we're going to cut through everything that is not Shi OU. And then, yeah, we're going to feast on the Shi OU. And uh, knock this team down to just one HP, which is a good sign because, uh, remember, they do still have a three-star uh, siphon over there. And look, Grillo's going to hit the Anivia three-star, so we were able to put that unit together as well in order to boost up his board. Again, I don't know why I'm rolling here. There's literally nothing for me to roll for. I should just be going to level nine. Again, we're hoping that we just win the next round and then this is over, but, you know, you never know. You can't just assume that it's going to be over like that. They are stacking Corkies. They have six Corkies over there, so I guess they're getting relatively close to Corky 3-star as well. But I'm just going to look to position over here, and I just want to make sure that Siphon does not charge right on top of Deja. Again, I have no idea why there's only a Gunblade on this, this unit. Why they have not itemized this is a little bit insane to me. But, yep, going to reposition here at the last second. There we go. My best hope for beating the Siphon 3-star is probably to just kill every other unit and then Yasuo get his third cast off on this unit so that it will, uh, you know, provide the auto kill. But it is going to be a little bit tricky to do that. Uh, even though there's only one item on this unit, Siphon with a Gunblade does heal for an awful lot of health. Like, every single time Siphon ults, that unit's going to go back up to full HP. Now, unfortunately, Siphon chomped Yasuo, so it does not look like I can win this round on my own. Deja will lose this round, but guess what? In comes the Cavalry, in comes Grillo's huge board, as the footage cuts out for a second, unfortunately. But you saw what happened there. We were able to win the round. Grillo's entire team comes in and finishes off Siphon. And that's it. GG. We're going to win this one and take a relatively comfortable first place finish. As far as what's been going on in the kind of the standings, the rankings, we are uh, getting very, very close to Diamond. I believe, uh, actually, we played another game after this one, and Grillo did hit Diamond. My account is very high platinum. So uh, we've been doing well with these games. I actually have not, I have top two'd every single game. <laughs> Top two 24 consecutive games in a row of double up, which is kind of insane. But these games have been a lot of fun. It's been great playing with Grillo and Antisocial and some others. So I'm going to keep playing them. There's a lot of fun. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, take care, folks.